It is episode six of the Obi One podcast, made possible by Bet Winner, the man himself, John Obi Mikel, and myself, Chris McCarty, back in the hot seat. Uh, we have reached the halfway point after this one, John. We have, we have. Great to have it's you back. It's flown by. Isn't it? It's flown yeah. by, and yeah. the big names keep on coming. Keep you on continue coming, right? to make the headlines, John. I think people might just be getting fed up of us <laughs> because you are in the news more than anyone else right now. <laughs> I keep dropping the bombs, don't I? CNN this past week. You've been at the F1, <laughs> hobnobbing with Adnock. I mean, you are the biggest thing out of Africa right now. You mate. are the legend. <laughs> I'm trying, mate. I'm trying to make sure that, you know, we... Um, no, no, it's been, it's been absolutely great. It's been absolutely great. Uh, like you said, the big names keep coming. Um, thanks to, 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 to people that I've played with yes. before and they've all, you know, have held whatever our relationship that, we, that we've managed to build during the years, over the years, they've still held it in a high standard that when you do call them, they pick up the phone Absolutely. and, and, and want to be uh, on the pod. So thanks to every six uh, episode we've done. You know, or the, fifth, one. the sixth one will yes. hopefully will be now. We're talking goats, goats of Nigeria, goats of the game. We're going to be joined momentarily by a goat of Chelsea. Yep. It is the one and only Gianfranco Zola. Your paths never did cross. No, no. But you've, you've seen the man, you know the man, you've met the man, you've heard the stories. What a legend he is. What a legend. What a legend he is. Uh, I mean, for the club, uh, again, I always say it. Um, you know uh, the charity game. I didn't. I, I didn't really know him. I've heard of him, obviously. I've. I didn't watch him growing up that much. Uh, and I, to be honest, I didn't know what he's done f for for the club. Obviously, I heard about it. Yeah. But to to be able to have such a, a reaction from from the Chelsea fans that I saw uh, uh, when we played the charity game uh, 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 just few uh, few months ago. Uh, at the bridge uh, for Viali, who just sadly passed away, uh, the reaction that he that he gets from the the fans, the love, the appreciation that he gets from the fans, for me, it was nothing that I've ever seen before. Obviously, really? I've played with like JT, Frank, Didier Drogba, Peter Cech, wh whom the fans absolutely adore, but with Gianfranco, it's, it's just when you a watch different level. highlights of him, John. What is it about him? What is he doing that? is just so special. I think his technique, really. I think the technique is what he, the fans ab absolutely loved. I think he brought something so different. The X Factor. Exactly, the X Factor is some, exactly, something that that, that, would, that, that that would make the fans jump off their seat and be like, whoa, how did he do that? Um, the technique that he had, and, and coming from Italy as well, yeah. and bringing that a little bit of flair and technique and, and, and play with a smile on his face. That's something that, you know, the British fans, the Chelsea fans, haven't seen before. But then he brought that, and they just all uh, you know the other thing took that's well with him. dawned on me as well. I think, I could be wrong on this, but I think he's five foot six. Yeah. And when he joined Chelsea in 1996, yeah. the Premier League was very much seen as the land of the giants. Yep. So for him to be one of the first diminutive maestros to come in yeah. and actually succeed, yeah. you it have to off your cap yeah, to that. It says a lot about him, obviously. I think when he, you know, when he first joined the club, uh, I think everybody was doubting him if he can be able to do it in the Premier League. Uh, this is not the Italian league. This is the Premier League. You know, the game is faster, tougher. Uh, yeah. The physicality of the game is, is much uh, tougher here in the Premier League. But, you know, he proved everyone wrong. Um, and I think also one thing that also helped, he was very smart. He played with his brains, you know. He didn't need to be that tall and yeah. a, a, a giant of a guy to be able to, to play in the Premier League. He knew he was a small guy. But then what helped him was the technique and the brains that he played with. You know, he was very smart in the game and he picked the right spot, the right uh, spaces to get the ball and, and be able to, to then do what he wanted to do, which is, you know, play with flair and create chances to score goals. What a player. And he joins us. Now I can see his name flickering up on our Zoom. It is the one and only Gianfranco Zola. We welcome him in to the conversation now. Hello, boys. Hey, Gianfranco, how are you? I'm very Hello, well, thank ciao. you. <laughs> yeah, ciao. Right. You're right, John. Pass is off. Gianfranco, it's great to have you on the uh, the podcast. Lovely to meet you. No problem. It's a pleasure for me to be along with you. It's, uh, 
It's a pleasure. Big pleasure. Thank you so much. I was about to ask John about his memories of you. What about your memories of John? Because it's important, John. You and John Franco, you've known each other. You're Chelsea greats, yeah. of course. <laughs> but you never, ever did play. You never crossed paths in your... No, in we never crossed paths. I mean, I think when you say... We are both Chelsea greats. He's more Chelsea greats. He's a legend. Than, he's a legend. <laughs> You're a Chelsea I mean, <laughs> to put it in context, though, when we went and we played the, the charity the charity game uh, recently at the bridge, uh, so we were all on the pitch, but, you know, it, no, he was on the, you know, he was on the bench. But you could hear every time he stood up, <laughs> the crowd went absolutely crazy. Everybody was screaming and shouting. And he was just walking, probably just walked from the bench and walked into the dressing room <laughs> to grab something. And everybody just thought, you know, he was about to come onto the pitch. But it just shows uh, what, a, what, what a great relationship you have with the fans and obviously what you've done for the club. So um, absolutely, absolutely a pleasure. Great, great to have you on, Gianfranco. Winning has always been my driving force. Growing up, I dreamt of playing for the Nigeria national team. My passion led me there. The support and unity of players and Nigerian fans led us to the final. Together, we won the African Cup of Nations. The moments that will forever be carved in my heart. Join the winning team with Betwinner. your kind of feelings and thoughts towards the man that's sitting to my right, Gianfranco John Obi? Well, first of all, let me say that I, I wish I had won uh, half of what he's won with Chelsea. I would have been very, very happy. I mean, no, unfortunately, we didn't, we didn't uh, play together. Uh, I belong to the previous generation and um, obviously, you know, I can't complain. It's been a great time for me, but uh, I admire uh, John. Uh, I've been talking about him today with... Uh, with uh, Can you hear me? Yes. yes, we can hear you. Yes, of uh, course so we can hear you. Me. I thought you were just... I was just talking about him with uh, with uh, Roberto Di Matteo today. We play golf together and uh, we are just having a conversation. I said, oh, look, I have to have a chat with uh, John. As soon as I said John, his eyes became, became bigger. <laughs> He was uh, he was very fond, very proud of uh, of you. He said uh, he spoke very highly about about uh, about uh, about uh, the relationship you had with him uh, on the pitch and off the pitch. So he was very high. No, as I said, it's uh, you know I, I saw I saw John playing and I was uh, I, I was a fan of him because uh, he, he was uh, you know uh, the type of midfielder that I I, I used to like a lot and. Uh, and I was, uh, I'm very pleased for all the contribution that is given to the club. The club, uh, Chelsea supporters, they are unbelievable supporters. And um, I was lucky to establish a very good relationship with them straight away. And uh, obviously, uh, the good results that we had helped to build that relationship even more. But, uh, you know, it was a great time. I, I really enjoyed my time and the relationship with them. Well, Gianfranco, we, we've had an awful lot of fun with John over the last few weeks. He is a Nigerian great. He's not the greatest <laughs> Nigerian, though that title belongs to Kanu. We've had a bit of a, a laugh and a giggle about this, Gianfranco. And I take you back to 1999, because I think you were on the bench the day that Kanu scored that incredible hat-trick at the bridge. Your memories of that. Oh, he killed! He killed us. We were playing a very good game, actually, and uh, and uh, you know we we thought we had uh, we had the, the, the three points in uh, you know already already in uh, already got you know already already achieved. But uh, then you know this uh, incredible uh, player that uh, he scored he scored this. Amazing! The last one killed Brilliance. Yeah. I couldn't believe that. Yeah. I fell on the floor when he scored. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was it was a great player. Actually, it's uh, it's a pity that he had uh, he had to stop earlier because of his problem. But uh, yeah. you know, fantastic player. We do jest, yeah. but Kanu. He is one heck of a player. Where is he now, John? Do we know where? Oh, Kanu what a player! Is? What a player was. I mean, I, I think that game we just talked about. 
Uh, I didn't watch the game, obviously, but obviously the game is you, sometimes the, the the goals are still being shown in the Premier From the League. Byline. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the the last one, like you said, the one that he you know just chopped it and then yeah. just back on the top corner. I mean, that was a great goal. It was just the the the, the way he played the game with 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 such effortlessness. You know, he just played the game with calm, cool. He was always cool on the ball, you know. He was never, he was never rushed. Never. He was never scared. You know, he had the ball on his feet. He knows he's not going to lose it. Uh, and 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 every time I went back to play in a national team, because I also didn't get to play with him a lot. Uh, just when I was coming to the national team, he was leaving. But to 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 watch him play at the national team as well, and to be able to play with him was absolutely a pleasure for me. He is absolutely fantastic player. He's still in Nigeria now. Is he? Uh, yeah, he doesn't do much. Uh, you don't see him much. But uh, what what an absolutely legend he you know he you know he he is and still was. And I uh, jest, you are still better. <laughs> you are still the best. I think I think the comparison is still there. <laughs> who who has won more and who hasn't won more? But I still give it to him. I think he is obviously the number one. And, and Gianfranco, there, there's a link there because John talks very highly of Canu. <laughs> I've got to ask you about a man that I've had the pleasure, actually, of spending a bit of time with, no longer with us, Diego Armando Maradona, a player that you have said in previous interviews changed your life, Gianfranco. Talk to us a little bit about that friendship that you shared with El Diego. Well, it's... Uh, you know, I was a very young player. I was, uh, I was uh, 22 years old when I went to Napoli and I was going from the... You know, there was a third uh, third division league. And uh, so I, I remember the first time I met Diego, I couldn't say a word. I was so embarrassed that I felt wow. like, uh, I felt, I, you know, I, I really looked like a stupid guy because <laughs> I couldn't say anything. I couldn't even say. The only thing he said, he said to me, oh, finally, we got a player smaller than me. <laughs> 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 and uh, but apart from that, you know, on a serious note, it was uh, it was uh, it was amazing uh, for me. It was uh, you know being a young player, and I was like a sponge, you know. And uh, so I wanted to learn, I wanted to get better. And in front of me, I had uh, probably the best player of all the time. It was uh, such a f uh, you know a fortune for me uh, to have him, but not all, also not only him, also Kareka, another fantastic player. Yeah. So by by every time every time I went to the training session, he was going. It was like going to a university, you know, study. <laughs> <laughs> it was. A, it was a, Where you, you have all your professors and everybody. <laughs> oh, unbelievable! I, I tell you, John. You know, uh, I think that what people they see, uh, they see of Maradona was just the, the tip of the iceberg, because in training it was unbelievable. unbelievable. I, I can't remember, I can't remember how many times we stopped the training, and we start clapping because of what no. he had just done. <laughs> it was unbelievable. And then th th there was one thing, you know, we we had to you know mix the groups, you know, when we had to play the football match. Yeah. And uh, every time he was uh, with uh, with Kareka, the game was finished. It was already over before we started. <laughs> you know, you guys are gonna lose for sure. <laughs> no, we, the, the the matter was how many how many of how many goals we were going to lose the game. So, but what was he, was he like? Was he also like uh, was he like a friendly kind of guy, or was he like? I know sometimes you meet these players that you know. Okay, they know how great they are. They know they're the super. They're the main man. And some of them have a little bit of arrogancy that they don't really speak to people. They don't speak to their colleagues. They just stay on their own because they know they are the main man. Is he like someone who's friendly, who jokes around, a bit of banter here and there, or he was just kind of on, on his own? Uh, I think uh, many, many of, uh, many of us, many of my teammates, they always said about, uh, you know, about Diego. What they like about him was, of course, the, the player because he was able to make you win games. But... Uh, all of them, really, uh, all of them say that uh, they also like or they nearly like more the the the, the person than the player. Wow! Because it was uh, I couldn't I could not believe uh, how humble he was with uh, with all of us. You know, he was uh, surrounded by you know so many talented players and uh, yeah. and uh, some of them you know uh, how it is now. Some of them they were like. Uh, 
you, you know, they, I don't know how to, to say that in English. It comes to me in Italian, but uh, they were his own shoes. They were, Diego was always down to earth. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we loved, uh, we loved him so much. He was, uh, he was uh, very, very uh, humble. And I remember that the other thing that he, he, we, we appreciate about him was that he was ready to fight for each one of us, no matter whether we, you were uh, uh, Andrea Carnevale, who was a national team player, or if he was Gianfranco Zola, who was just a, you know, a, a player coming from the third league. He would, uh, when there was uh, to do something for, for a player, he was always on, on the first line. I remember... First year, one thing that impressed me, that, uh, uh, you know, we, we went there, we joined the team, uh, me in particular, me and another young player who came from the lower league. And uh, so the club didn't, didn't want to give us the, the, the bonus for winning the league uh, or winning the trophies. Wow. And so what he did, he, he went to the to the chairman and he fought with the with the chairman and he obtained the prizes also for us. Wow. You know, you wow. you don't see many That's many amazing. times. You don't see many times. You know what it's like. You know, yeah, the, the, yeah, you don't see yeah. many times uh, people like like uh, with this cha- statue doing things like that. We uh, it was impressive. Room. Yeah, that is. We had Roberto on the last episode, Gianfranco, telling us one or two funny tales about Paul Gascoigne and his, you know, <laughs> famous pranks. What's your Diego Maradona story? What's the story that you perhaps have never told anyone? What made Diego, Diego, <laughs> off the pitch? <laughs> well, <laughs> it was very difficult to go, to stay behind uh, Diego off the pitch, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Of the pitch, you cannot uh, stay with him. <laughs> well, we all know that Diego was uh, was a guy that uh, you know uh, he had his own life, and um, uh, in a in, in a way, I understand it because it wasn't easy to to have a normal life uh, like everyone else. Uh, I remember going out, uh, you know, whatever we went out, he was always surrounded by people. He couldn't have his own. His own his own life. So, uh, you know, he he, he was uh, you know when he was on his own, he was he had his own life, and I don't think uh, many of us uh, you know stay with him. I think uh, <laughs> if you ask me a, a particular story, I don't know. It doesn't come to me <laughs> very easily. <laughs> He is someone who, still to this day, we had Victor Ossime on the podcast a few weeks back, Gianfranco, and he says, when you walk through Naples, Maradona is just everywhere. It is a city that still lives and breathes him, despite the fact that he's no longer with us. No, absolutely. I think uh, uh, the relationship between him and the city was uh, was unbelievable. Also because when he was playing for Napoli, he was always... uh, you know, uh, on on the side of the of the Napoli, he knew that that there is a there is a kind of uh, uh, rivalry between the south and the north. You no, know, in Italy, obviously, the north is the rich part, and the, the south is the poor part. And uh, mm. you know, a, a lot of people they feel like they are for, forgotten by 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 the state and by everyone and they and they're always treated uh, with no respect and Diego was always uh, on their side he was always you know playing football winning games are also you know bringing a uh, you know uh, how can you say supporting the the, the problems that the, the Napoli yeah. and the south of, the, of Italy had so and the the, the the people normal people appreciated that. Uh, they felt like uh, you know Diego was not only winning games for them, but also he was uh, you know uh, taking their cause and uh, and uh, promoting their cause. So they they loved it. They Diego was fantastic in this in this sense. Yeah. Well, John's uh, got himself in a bit of trouble with the Napoli fans <laughs> because John has turned into Victor Osimi's agent in the last few weeks, haven't you? You've been talking up this move to Chelsea for Victor. Yeah, of course I have been. I think uh, obviously we all know what what Victor has done for Napoli. Yes. You know, had a great season last 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 year, and 
you know, if you ask anybody right now, you would probably say, is it the right time for, for you know, to, for him to move and go somewhere, come to come to the Premier League, you know, where he can probably win big bigger trophies, you know, challenge for the Champions League and things like that. Because I think he's done really well for Napoli. He's done and, and obviously, the, the, whatever happened last year happened. Was it earlier this year happened or this earlier summer happened? Season, yeah. So there's, there's, there's been this kind of, you know, whatever rift, you know, between him and the management. But I think it's now sorted. I hope it's sorted. And now he's happy again playing football. But I think uh, for me, really, I'd like to see him come to, <laughs> come to our club. And uh, you know what I mean? And I think we need someone like that. Obviously, uh, Jackson is doing really well right now. But I think if we can get Victor to come and... You know, competition is always healthy, isn't it? In a, you know, you know, you know, in a team like Chelsea. So if Victor comes to the club, I think he'll be a, a very good competition for Jackson. And you like him, Gianfranco? Well, I like him very much. It's uh, uh, I, it happens to me that I had to to speak about him two years ago when he first came to Napoli. I remember one one club, uh, sorry, one uh, sport TV from Naples called me and he asked me what I thought about him. So I started a few games and I. And I, I, I liked the way he, he, as a striker, he used to attack the, the the space in behind the defenders. I thought he was very, very powerful, very strong. So I, 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 I said to myself, I think this guy can do very well in the Italian league. But I also noticed that uh, he was lacking a little bit of uh, control, technical, you know, ability, the, the yeah, type of yeah. ability that uh, Kanu used to have, you know. You give the ball to him and he can hold the ball for everyone to join him and, uh, you know, make the team come up. Uh, I, I thought uh, he was missing something like that. But last year, the way with uh, Spalletti, he, he yeah. developed. It was unbelievable. You, you know, it was... You like, uh, was you, uh, you like him for Chelsea? You like him for English football? From what you've seen of him, Gianfranco, he's tailor-made for English football? Well, uh, is this talk... Podcast going to be in uh, Naples as well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll geo block it from Naples. <laughs> I think it will. Well, I, know. <laughs> <laughs> well I, I think uh, I rate him as one of the top strikers around uh, at the moment uh, for his energy, for his ability to score, and also play with the opposition. So uh, I'm sure he can be a success with the Premier League as well, for sure. Uh, of course, the way, you know, for what I see with Chelsea, I think a player with this quality will do will do very well. I think it will, uh, it will change a lot of things for Chelsea, to the positive, in my opinion. But again, as I said, I, I, I truly believe that it was, uh, for me, I think it was a right, right thing to stay again one more year with one Napoli. More, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, he's, uh, you know, you need, uh, you need to, he, he's done extremely well, but what is more important is to confirm what you've done on the previous year. Yeah. That is, uh, you know, it's, it's such an important thing when, you know, you, you, because uh, after you've done so well, you are tested mentally and uh, and uh, with a character, you know. You need to confirm and do even better if you to can. To do it again, yes. So yeah, I think exactly. it'll, be, it'll yeah. be a good test for him. Yeah, yeah. When, when you moved to Chelsea at uh, November 1996, it was, Gianfranco, did you feel you were ready for English football? Was that a move that, that you pushed for yourself? Well, it's something that I wanted to do, for sure. Uh, it wasn't my idea to have an experience uh, abroad. Uh, probably I didn't expect to be that year. Um, and uh, I think it was a good time, also because I came from the Italian League. Uh, and that moment, the, the Italian League was the strongest around. Yeah. So they, in my opinion, gave me an advantage. Uh, I came with a very high preparation physically, technically, and tactically. So they gave me an edge. The only reserve or doubts that they were is because of the physicality of the, of the, of the league. So a lot, of, a lot of people were doubting whether uh, I was going to be successful because of that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and also I was playing as a striker, and uh, so a lot of doubts said, uh, no, it's too small, they will they will throw him out of the pitch. These are the, the kind of things that I was, uh, I was uh, hitting, no, when I when I first came. Yeah, yeah. But it was good for me. It was a good challenge. He made me better. He, I had to change my game and uh, to adapt to the Premier League. And it was uh, it was 
very, very good, very positive. Aside from Chelsea, there's a lot of things that link you to men that you might not be aware of. You played John under Carlo Angelotti. Yeah. And so did Gianfranco yeah. Zola. Yeah. Your final few months with Parma, was there a falling out there, Gianfranco? Did you and Carlo see eye to eye? Obviously, I know Enrico Chiesa was coming through, Hernan Crespo as well. How did that relationship with Carlo and yourself end at Parma? No, no, no. We never had uh, any problems between them. The only, the only point was this. I, I think... Uh, Carlo, when he first came to Parma, he was uh, he was a different coach than he was when he was at Chelsea. First of all, I think he was more more. Uh, he was at the beginning of his experience. I think he was the yeah. second year he, he was coaching, and uh, uh, he was more. Uh, uh, he related a lot more to the system, right? He was uh, obviously he, he was uh, uh, Saki was his uh, his mentor. Uh, Arrigo Saki was his mentor, Saki, yeah. okay. and uh, he, he, he played for him and he worked with him and with the national team. So uh, everything he was doing he was related to the system. So all the players they need to fit into the system, and uh, and so therefore uh, when he first came to 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 Naples, uh, sorry to Parma, we had. Uh, I was already there, and then uh, uh, Enrico Keza came, and uh, Hernan Crespo came as, as well. So, in order for me to find, uh, or in order for Carlo to fit all of us, he had to change position to one of them. And I was the one, probably, he thought because of, of the qualities, he could adapt in a different position. And uh, and so, therefore, I, I, we tried, uh, you know, the first few months, but it, it didn't work. Uh, to be fair, I wasn't at, at the best period and myself. I wasn't playing very well, so this, uh, you know, took us to the to the point where we made a decision. But uh, with Carlo, we we spoke a lot about that. Never had a problem with that. I wish that Carlo could have been the same coach he was with Chelsea. I'm sure that uh, he would have find better solution to fit uh, all of all of us. In. Yeah, you said that, that's the only reason. Yeah, loved him. He yeah loved no, him. no. I think I think Franco can also uh, agree on that. I think you know he's a, obviously he's a really really good uh, man management when it comes to man management. Uh, I think that's something also that he became much much better. Uh, the older he get, you yeah. know, he got, he became much better. Uh, the longer he stayed at the job, coaching and getting to know how to deal with players, he became much, much better at being, you know, managing players. But that was something he was really, really good at when he came to Chelsea. I think everybody that played under Carlo, we all absolutely loved him. Uh, great, great, great guy. And your move to, to Chelsea, Gianfranco, were there any other clubs sniffing about? Did you have options in England and Spain, perhaps? No, there were there were two two teams that they were uh, they were expressing interest. Uh, one was uh, Inter, and uh, the other one was uh, I think it was a, it was a Spanish team. Maybe uh, to be honest, I can't remember whether it was uh, Valencia. I think it was Valencia. They had an interest, but uh, but uh, you know I. I uh, I knew at Chelsea there was uh, already Vialli and uh, Di Matteo with the uh, Gullit, so I thought it was uh, it was the best place for me to go. The, Itali the Italian mafia is already yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they were already working there. <laughs> and uh, who who was it that did the convincing? Was it was it Rude? Was it Mr. Bates, Ken Bates? I mean, what were your early dealings with him in that move to Chelsea? No, a, a lot was obviously uh, Di Matteo was already talking to me about that, and also Gullit uh, spoke to me. So I think they were the, and also Luca. I mean, that was uh, the reason why I chose to come to England. They they were speaking so highly about uh, about the club, about their life in London, and uh, they made a big difference. Right, we are recording this podcast on November 29th. I'm popping you on the spot here, Gianfranco. Do you know what you did exactly 26 years ago today? No, I don't have a clue. I, did, I don't know even. I don't even know what I was doing yesterday. So you need to help that's me on that. I'm getting old. You know, I'm getting old. I, I keep forgetting I'll everything. I'll tell you this: 26 years ago tonight, and us recording this podcast. Okay. You scored your first 
senior hat trick against Derby County. Wow. Wow. Playing, yeah, for Chelsea, remember that. playing for Chelsea. Oh, wow. 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 Absolutely. Wow. The, and the last, the, the only one, actually. Is it the only hat trick you scored? <laughs> The only hat trick I scored for Chelsea, yes. I remember wow. that day. It was a, it was a, we played as such a good... I think it was at the beginning of the season as well, if, you, if I don't remember well. Yeah, but well, November. So as I told was, you, I don't, yeah. I don't know what I did yesterday. Could you imagine that 20, 26 <laughs> but, years ago? You know, wow, your time at Chelsea, John's already alluded to it. You are revered. 2003 poll, we're going back 20 years ago, Chelsea fans, 60% on the website, voted you the greatest player in Chelsea's history. What was it about the football club? What was it about the fans, the city, that just chimed with your personality? Well, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know what, uh, what is... Uh, I, to be honest, I was very honoured. Um, it was something that I didn't expect. Also, considering the players that I had in the past, they, they were very successful. They won the league. So, but it was uh, it was great to me, um, and I'm I'm still very very proud of that. Um, so I don't know. It's uh, it's it's an amazing thing. Uh, I didn't know about this uh, this rotation, and I didn't expect <laughs> that. <laughs> I've done I, research on I, I, it's, to it's be being honest, revealed to be here honest. today in the Obi-Wan podcast that you're the greatest <laughs> Chelsea football player ever. Careful, JT and Frank Lampard. Well, JT and words. Frank will say something about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, uh, I've never, uh, obviously, I, I, I've been in, I was at the club for a very, very long time. And you can never get such reception when, obviously, you only get such reception when it's JT or when it's Frank Lampard stepping into the pitch or come out of the pitch. But what I saw... On that day, the charity game was something different. I mean, I, I just saw something like, wow. I mean, when he stands up, the whole stadium, but it was about 40,000 people. Yeah. Everybody went absolutely crazy. And, and it just tells, it just, it just shows how much the fans absolutely adore you at the club. I mean, it must have been such an honor to play, to play for these fans. John, you make me cry like it. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's 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 fantastic. I don't know. It's uh, I, I think uh, that uh, the, the the relationship that we 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 establish, but not only with me. I think in all the, those years, it was a uh, you know it was a great time because you, you could feel that the, the team was growing up a lot, and uh, the team hadn't won for such a long time, and uh, we just came and then. You know, we won the FA Cup, and then we came. Uh, we improved in the league, and then we won the the Winners Cup. So everything was going very well, and I think uh, the relationship, uh, the, the, you know, grow. And uh, in me, particularly, they like the my way to play. Uh, you know, they they felt that I was giving everything for them, which I did uh, all the time, and. Uh, you know the relationship uh, became very very strong and uh, and still is i'm very i have to confess i was very uh, emotional when uh, when uh, when we played the the game uh, john it's, uh, yeah. i didn't expect <laughs> that uh, reception and uh, i was so so proud of that you, you said that your move to to england came at the right time john franco there were a couple of doubts whether you had the physical attributes to to yes. succeed in the premier league when you got there did it surprise you at all? You know, coming from a defensive orientated Italian game, the best defenders yeah. came out of Italy for a Maldini's, very long time. The Nestas, yeah. Brazies, Costa Curtas, Cannavaros. You get to England, did it surprise you at all? Yeah, no, it, it, it surprised me. Actually, I took the challenge. I knew that there, there, there were a lot of doubts about my physical physicality, not much in the physicality of the defenders. So, but I knew that uh, that uh, the league where I was coming from was defensively wise was unbelievable. So I I developed a lot of uh, skills, not only technically but also tactically. I knew what to do, and uh, especially the first the first year, I took a huge advantage when I play as a striker. Uh, I, I said it other times. Tactically, uh, dropping from uh, from the offensive line into the in between the, the the defensive line, the midfield line of the opposition, and uh, there was that kind of uh, debate. You know, the midfielder say, "Okay, well, yeah. Zola is there free, but the defender <laughs> will pick him up." 
the defender yeah. said, "Okay, I stay in the line because uh, you will be picked up by a yeah. midfielder." <laughs> And so that uh, that allowed me to receive many times the ball in between the lines and have a little bit of space. And when I had space, obviously in the first few meters, I was uh, I was very quick, very fast, and not uh, not something that uh, the the English defenders of that time didn't like very much. So <laughs> they, they they gave me a huge huge uh, advantage, uh, honestly, and. Um, and uh, the first year we used a lot, especially me and uh, and uh, Mark Hughes. We played together. We used yeah. that uh, that uh, you know tactical advantage uh, uh, a lot of times, and it was very effective. I can just see it now. You and JT arguing who's picking yeah, up. Yeah, Franco, yeah, is it yeah, you or is it yeah. JT? No, definitely. I think I I I, I know exactly uh, you know the, what he's talking about. Obviously, I don't. I think back then. A lot of clubs, uh, teams weren't paying so much attention on this, on that position, no, and, exactly. and, and you know, so you probably took advantage of that because then, as time goes on, that position became very, very vital yeah. now to all the Premier League clubs, and that's why that position is very, very vital. Like you were just speaking, now, I can remember my my best highlights of you. I still watch it today sometimes on TV. It's been shown. You know, the one where you chopped, was it Jamie Carragher? I think oh, it was. Jamie Carragher. <laughs> chopped him and chopped him and chopped him a yeah. couple of times and he was on the floor. I think every time I watch that, for me, uh, you know, it was. And then yeah. you, you meet Danny Murphy in the third one. John, yeah. and he chopped, he chopped him, him well. again. I mean, he the, deserved that, that. that was the technique. That was the technique you had and you yeah. brought to, to the Premier League. I mean, that was absolutely amazing to see you do that. John, he deserved that because uh, <laughs> I cannot even tell you how many how many times he, he kicked me on the pitch. So that was my my revenge. <laughs> the only thing that after that I had to leave the country. That's the only <laughs> thing. <laughs> well, just on that, I, I don't think Jamie will be the answer to this. And I'm not being harsh to Jamie, but in England, John Franco, who was the defender that gave you the most problems? The defender that you just hated coming up against. Uh, I think uh, when you had to play against Arsenal, uh, you know the back four of Arsenal with the uh, with the, the famous uh, back four. It, it was it was a nightmare. Adams and uh, and the others, Keon, Martin, Martin Keon, Keon, and yeah. uh, playing against them, it was always a nightmare because they were very organized. They were very, you know, Martin Martin was was a very tough defender. <laughs> uh, also, he was fast. Uh, for a defender, uh, but also as a team, they were they were very close, you know, and they didn't allow many many space. Uh, those spaces that I was talking about before, they, they were just covered by by Patrick Vieira. Oh, uh, so yeah. there was, you know, uh, it, it, it was very tough to play against them. Uh, I think it was very tough. Other defender also, uh, Rio Ferdinand was. Oh, yeah. Was a strong yeah. defender because despite that was he was a high, uh, you know, a big, powerful defender. He was very quick on his he feet. He was quick, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was quick on the feet, and so I I found it difficult playing against him. I said many times he was uh, because of the the quality. You know, he he could uh, he could uh, you know uh, face me and also hold me on the, on the speed and uh, and uh, that was uh, there was uh, there was a surprise because i didn't expect that i don't think i've ever asked you this question yeah. who was your toughest midfield opponent in the premier league at Ooh. chelsea I've all, what do you mean Ag against against i've always who did said, you hate it i've always said steven gerrard steven I mean, g steven, steven gerrard for me was the toughest you know, he this guy can is just like what Jim Frock is just saying now. He can tackle, he's quick, he's very, very good on the ball, technically very, yeah. very good on the ball. And he's just a midfield player that he, he was a, he was an all round midfield player. He had everything. He can shoot, he can run, he's 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 powerful, he can tackle. It's, it's very difficult to find a midfield player who has all those attributes in one. Stevie G had everything, he had all of that in one. And he just knows he's so good on the ball. And he just sometimes, he doesn't need to take too many touches. One, two touches, and he's on the space. Yeah. And as soon as he gets it, he can shoot. Obviously, we know he can shoot left and light. So, so for me, he was the most difficult midfield player for me ever, really. Yeah, what a league. player. What a player he was. Yeah. Uh, I, and I don't know if you know this, Jean Franco. I was watching this a little earlier. Sir Alex Ferguson paid you the ultimate compliment. 
he called you, he, he said that you annoyed him. He actually <laughs> told the story about how he actually man-marked you back in the 98-99 season, the season that Manchester United won the treble, and he talked about the fact you were always smiling, and that annoyed him, because <laughs> no player should be smiling against Man United. Did you love playing against United back then? Yeah, no, I, I, I saw that, and... Uh... Well, I think he annoyed me maybe, uh, as well a few times, to be honest. <laughs> uh, no, I, it's, regarding that smile, I always thought that uh, what I was doing on the pitch, no matter how difficult it was, it was always the best thing I, I could have done in my life. So exactly. I, I never allowed, uh, and I knew that, uh, that, 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 you know, being happy to be on the pitch and enjoy every moment, even if in the tough, mo uh, the, the difficult ones, was was uh, was very good for my, you know, for my performance. Uh, I needed to have that kind of, uh, um, uh, how can you say, state on the pitch in order to perform well. I had to be happy. I had to be thoughtless, and I had to be free. So I always try to to have uh, those conditions on the pitch. And, uh, and uh, you know, it, make it made a big difference, actually. You were similar, John. Yeah. JT said it. Frank said it. You always played with a smile. I always think, when I think of you, I think of you a bit like Gianfranco. Smiling, that's your nature. Yeah, I do, I do. I think sometimes also when you play, you know, the big games as well, you need a bit of that uh, smile. You need to be in that state whereby, you know, you know you're relaxed. You know, you're enjoying the game. You're trying to find things that are going to make you smile a little bit. And just to just to take your mind off off the not off the game, but to keep you relaxed, to make sure that you are there, yeah, not stressed. Uh, but like I said, I've always said that every time we played the every time we played the big games, somebody that you don't want to look at is Frank because Frank is always <laughs> like Frank is always you know he's always got this mean face. He's always like, oh, you pick your man, you you know. Frank is always the guy who's looking around and. And sometimes I don't really want to watch Frank because I know I'll start getting nervous as well. <laughs> but uh, no, you do need that uh, that uh, calmness to, to 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 be able to play those big games. Who was Mister Serious for Chelsea back in your days, Jean Franco? Uh, Mister Serious. Mister Serious. Oh, there was one, Steve Clark. <laughs> Steve, Clark. Steve Clark. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh my goodness! We we used to do everything to make him laugh, but he, he was very hard. no. Actually, well, actually, he looked he looked very serious when he was working, but then he was uh, out out of the pitch was uh, was uh, was different. So, but Steve was probably the most serious of all, of all of us. And of course, he's done a great job with Scotland, my beloved. Yeah, I know. He still looks very serious, even now when serious. you see him. When you see him do the press interview, is like very serious. <laughs> he never smiles. He was assistant with Josie. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he was with us as well. A lovely, lovely, lovely guy. Uh, you know, he knows his he knows his job. He's he's very passionate about what he does. Uh, he was assistant to Jose. Yeah. He learned a lot from Jose. And, and and the 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 big compliment I give Steve is that you know he took his time to 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 learn the game. He, he wasn't in a rush to 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 become a number one. He wanted to he wanted to learn from the best. So he stayed under Jose and learned how to manage the game, how to look at the game differently, how to also manage players, uh, different players yeah. from different cultures as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I I had I I had a great time with Steve. But like you said. You know, he's always very serious. Yeah. It takes a lot to get Steve to smile. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> Scotland reaching the Euros and he's still not smiling. You, you said on uh, last week's podcast, Diego Costa was the big joker yeah, in your yeah, Chelsea yeah. changing room. Who was the big joker in your changing room, John Franco? <laughs> oh, we had few. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I think you funny guy. Them, probably. <laughs> Are you one of them, probably? <laughs> no, 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 no. I wasn't one of them. Uh, probably, or uh, Dennis. Dennis was uh, was a joker. Uh, oh, yeah, why is yeah, it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, Luca yeah. Vialli was uh, was another guy. You, you know, uh, joker. Uh, well, it's probably Marcel Desailly when he came. He was uh, always funny guy, always uh, always uh, always joking. But I would say probably Dennis. Dennis was. Uh, the naughty one. Some of the jokes, <laughs> some of his jokes, they were not very good. 
<laughs> Who's taller, Gianfranco, Dennis or you? Oh, definitely me. Definitely. <laughs> if you ask him, he will say no, but uh, but definitely. Me. I am yeah, I taller than him, well. stronger than him. <laughs> stronger than him as well. I've got to ask. We cannot do a podcast and not ask you about a goal that I genuinely, and I'm not just saying this, this is one of my top 10 goals of all time. The corner kick, Norwich City, Stamford Bridge. I think it's Robert Green, former England goalkeeper who's in goals for Norwich. That flick, Gianfranco, is that off the training ground or is that just spontaneity? Uh, look, uh, coincidence. Uh, we were talking about that yesterday with my son, Andrea, no? and uh, we were just talking about uh, where, where did it come from? And uh, if you ask me where it comes from, I say, uh, I don't know. I, I, I didn't try that in training, first of all. But obviously, it's something that I was uh, visualizing. I used to visualize a lot, my, me playing football and, uh, you know, dreaming of maybe scoring a goal, a particular goal. And, uh, and, uh, and so when it happened, you know, I didn't think too much. I went on the first post and I wanted to probably hit the ball. The ball was low and I, and I tried that. And I think is that the reason why it came out is because of all the training that we've done, uh, John, no? You do a lot of training every day. You you improve your ability, your uh, your balance, you improve your touch. You improve yeah. a lot of things in uh, you know that you do playing football. And then when the moment comes, you need to follow the instinct. You know the the instinct mm. was uh, to to do to hit the ball like that. And I didn't think too much. I did it, and I was brave enough to try it. It could have been a disaster, but I tried it, and uh, and it worked out. But I think without all the training that uh, I, the training and the visualizing and the all staff watching football, other other champions doing st- things like that, then you know it came to it came all together in that moment, and I was uh, I was very proud. I, I, honestly, uh, they I didn't know that I uh, the 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 ball went uh, like that and I hit the ball in that uh, like that until later on in the night I watched it on TV because uh, I wasn't sure that <laughs> that was the you end of the result. Believe it. <laughs> no, I could not believe it. But, you know, it wasn't planned. It came up and the only good thing was because I didn't think too much. I uh, It came to me at the moment and I did it. No, I think exactly. Uh, I mean, I can understand. Sometimes when you, as a football player, you you, you the trainings that you do... Yeah. Uh, and those, when those moments come, you do things off the cuff. And and then once you yeah. do it with the instinct, you know, you, you, you just see that it works perfectly well. But it comes from those hours that you've put in training because, you know, you, you, you've you become you've 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 trained so much and you've become fitter and you've your technique, technical ability as well has become much better. So when you try things that works out really well. It's not just by chance. It's because you've put in the work to do it. And then because you've put in so much work to do that, and when it happens, it's just, it's just perfect. Just to be clear, though, John, if you're trying to do what Gianfranco's done, pre- <laughs> you're pulling a hamstring. Come on now. I'm pretty sure I will pull my hamstring. <laughs> that, that ball's going through your legs. <laughs> Oh, what but it just goal. shows the technical ability that he had as well. Absolutely. I mean, playing. What um, a goal. Yeah. What yeah. a goal that was. And, you know, I, I read an interview, Gianfranco, 2003. You've been at the club seven years. Roman Abramovich takes over the football club. He wanted to keep you. There was an <laughs> offer for you to stay. Is that right? Not really, actually. When, when he bought the club, he thought I was still part of the club. Uh, he didn't know probably that I was, uh, my contract was going to expire. Uh, I did have uh, a negotiation with the with the previous club, but because of the uh, the big financial problems that the club was going through, and uh, they didn't have uh, you know a big leverage. So uh, honestly, they were they were talking to me about uh, you know a big cut in the in the wage and. Uh, and there was one reason that, uh, you know, also cons- made me consider, it, you know, leaving the club. The other big reason, which was, uh, in the end, the the most important one was because I wanted to go back to my country and play and play for Cagliari, you know, my home team. 
Uh, but uh, yeah, going back to your question, Roman Abramovich he didn't know. I thought uh, I was part of the package, and uh, when he bought the club, then uh, he found out that I was going to sign for Cagliari, and he, and yes, he did. He tried to buy me back from Cagliari. That's that's the story, actually. <laughs> did he, he actually try to buy you back? Yeah, that's what uh, they that's what the the chairman of Cagliari. Uh, told me he told me that uh, you know uh, Chelsea k- get in contact with them with him in particular and uh, he was uh, he was asking if I could uh, if they could buy me, buy me back for Chelsea <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> That would have been the, the weirdest transfer market, isn't it? That would have been the <laughs> deal of the, it's the, a very deal strange, of the century. It's a very strange question. <laughs> <laughs> that is incredible. Yeah. It's amazing. And but for you, you had made a promise to Calgary, you wanted to stay there. Yeah, no, I I, I had made my, my mind up. Uh, I wanted to finish there, um, play for, for, for Cagliari, help them, and also you know, also I wanted to leave Chelsea on a high. That was another another reason. So I had a great time, and uh, you know, I, I think it was the best way to leave. Uh, you know, I wanted people to remember me like I played the last season. So that was uh, another big important uh, motivation for me to leave. Uh, I've never asked you this, John. Have you ever been tempted by management? You know, you're still a young man. Yeah, you're actually yeah. younger than me. That says a lot. You're younger than me, for goodness sake. Have you ever considered, is management part of your future at all, do you think? I wouldn't say, right now, I would probably say no. Have I thought about it? Yes, I've thought about it. Uh, but is it something that I, that, that I really want to do? Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. You know, when I look at my ex, my you know, my ex, my teammates that I played with, obviously, a lot of them that I thought were, were going to be absolutely great managers, the, it hasn't turned out to be. I'm not just saying because of you know Frank and JT. It, it is all the players uh, like the likes of Didier Drogba, and Michael yeah. Essien, Paulo Ferreira, and Ricardo Cavallo. This was Michael Balak. Also, we thought he was going to be a manager when he finished playing. And, and this place, when 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 I look at them now, and I haven't seen seen them, it's really interesting. Achieve what we all thought they were going to achieve, you know, in terms of um, being ma- been 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 managers. And uh, I think the only person, obviously, who's done it, who's done quite well, is, is you know, is only Frank. Uh, but uh, for me, <clears throat> maybe down the line, I might look at it. Uh, I think one thing I'm really scared of is being, is you know, getting sacked. I don't want to be. <laughs> you don't wanna I don't want to be fired. <laughs> if I can be promised that I will stay, stay in the job forever, <laughs> then I'll probably do it. But no, it's something that I will probably look at, you know, in the future. Really. Was that always part of your future, Gianfranco? Did you always? No, 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 manager? no. No, actually, it wasn't. Uh, when I finished. Uh, 2005, I, I I had no intention to be a coach. I didn't think I had the qualities to be a coach. Uh, so I, for one year, I I stayed out. Uh, but then I was approached by the Italian Federation, and they asked me to work with uh, 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 Gigi Casiraghi, Pierluigi Casiraghi, the former striker, and he was a great friend of mine. So. Uh, I said, okay, I, I can I can help. The under 21s for Italy is a good uh, good position. I work with the young players. I like the experience, and then everything started from there. Um, and uh, yeah, it's true what you said, John. It's uh, uh, it, it's it's a job that uh, requires to have abilities different from what uh, you were very successful as a footballer. You, you need to develop a lot of uh, a lot of new abilities, and uh, and uh, it, there are difficult moments when you get a sack, and it happened to me a few times. <laughs> I know I know I know what it's like, but it's good. I mean, it's it's a process that make you, makes you better, you know. It's uh, and I think uh, the knowledge that you got inside, if you are able to, you know, go inside and take them out, I think. Uh, would make you very successful. So I'm looking forward to seeing you on the bench, actually. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully in the next 
probably five to ten years. Five, I'll, ten years. Yeah, I'll probably look into it. You're a young man, John. You're a young man. Now, Gianfranco, I know looks can be deceiving, but you do not strike me as the man that would be throwing teacups against the wall, the hair dryer treatment. Have you ever lost your... I'll tell you... My French here. Have you ever lost your shit? I'll tell you, I might surprise you on that. Uh, I remember my first uh, job, uh, full-time job, was at, uh, at uh, uh, West Ham. And... Um, and uh, I remember, you know, we started the we, we started the adventure quite well. I I got appointed and we won the first two games. So I said, "Wow, this is easy. <laughs> it's very easy." <laughs> but then, then we went on a very bad uh, bad run. After that. We we start losing the first. We lost lost the second. We lost the third. We lost the fourth. <laughs> then you know the blood started not to. You know, circulate uh, very well through my body. <laughs> I was getting quite nervous, but anyway, we played a game, and uh, we played a game. I think it was away at. Uh, I think it was, uh, if I remember well, it was Derby away, and uh, we we played badly. We we played at the last minute. We considered a goal, a silly goal, and we lost. So we went on the we went on the change on the change ground, and I I. I I stepped in and I saw one player having a go on another player. And he was telling him a lot. He was uh, obviously, he was uh, one of the influential guys and he was a very important guy. Actually, one of the most important uh, guys that we had. And he was he was very nervous for the situation and he was having a go with uh, with another one. And I, I completely lost my mind. I went on the uh, on the change room and I and I start shouting and I grab you know the the, the massage table. Yeah. <laughs> so I grab the massage table and uh, with with all my strength I throw behind my back <laughs> and I saw you know everybody went quiet they didn't expect that and I thought wow you know no way then I throw the the the, the the table behind me. I just hit my the fitness coach, and he was he was <laughs> under the table. So everybody everybody couldn't believe that uh, I've done something like that. And yes, yeah, so there are moments in which uh, you need to do also that. And uh, yeah, the people they need to understand that uh, sometimes uh, you 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 have to be strong and uh, yeah. and. Uh, that that what it taught it taught me the most, uh, you know, uh, being a coach. That sometimes players need you to be strong, and uh, I think I learned to do that. Where did you enjoy managing the most, Gianfranco? You talk there about West Ham. You had some success with Watford, of course. You missed out on a place in the Premier League. Sorry to remind you that playoff final. Uh, from where and which club did you fight feel most at home? I guess is what I'm getting at. Well, I think uh, uh, first year with West Ham was great. We we you know I, I, we played good football despite all the problems with the club. The club, uh, you know, was uh, was uh, on administration because the the, the owner went bankrupted. Uh, so, but we we played good football and we were good. I really enjoyed, to be honest, uh, first year with Watford. Uh, we we started with um, with uh, with a very young team and with no ambition. I think we we had one of the lowest budgets in, lowest budget uh, in the Premier League in the sorry in the Championship. Oh, and uh, we we you know we really did uh, did very well. Uh, apart from that, we we play such a good football that uh, you know I I really enjoyed it. Sometimes it was like me being on the pitch, and uh, that was uh, <laughs> that was very important. Yeah, I remember that Watford team. Yeah. That was a great team. I remember watching that team. You're right. You played some beautiful football in that first season, and then fast forward a little bit, you then get the phone call from Maurizio Sarri to become his assistant, yeah. to come back to Chelsea. Talk us through how all of that came around. No, that was a surprise, actually. I knew that, uh, well, uh, one day I think I received a phone call from my agent and uh, 
and he said to me, uh, I think, uh, you know, Maurizio is uh, being contact contacted by, by the club and... Uh, and uh, there is a, you know, he would like you to to be to join him uh, in his uh, coaching stuff. And uh, well, that was great actually. It was uh, an opportunity, a big opportunity for me for two reasons. Obviously, because I was going to be going back to Chelsea. That was the first one, and the other one was uh, Maurizio was uh, sorry was a coach that I, I like a lot. Um, I. I I, I remember I used to call him every now and then to ask about the, about uh, his coaching, and he was always very kind to me. So he was uh, he was great, you know, and uh, I was very pleased to do that. He, he replaced yeah. Sari, a man that we haven't actually talked all that much about on the podcast. Yeah. Antonio Conte, John. Yeah, yeah. You didn't really see eye to eye with no, Antonio. No, 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 no. We didn't really see eye to eye. Obviously. You know, I think before Conte came into the club, we all kind of knew about his his way of management, his strict way of management, uh, the Italian way of <laughs> of of you know <laughs> his style of management. And for us, we went that we went that really. We 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 we've, let, let's put it this way: we never really kind of had a, an Italian kind of manager. I think there also was a talk about Fabio Capello coming. I think way before that. Yeah. And and we weren't really uh, ha having the the, the feeling, Discipline. yeah, of of of, a, of an Italian manager. So when obviously when he came into the club, and then um, you know the whole story about me. So obviously he gave me this option of either I go to the national team to represent my country for the for the under twenty three Olympics or stay at the club and do the preseason, uh, which he just came into the club. So he gave me this option. Oh, the club kind of gave me this option. I knew where the option came from. Obviously, it came from him. And I, I decided, you know what? I've never represented my country at the Olympics. I want to do that. So we had the conversation, me and Michael and Menalo. It's like, listen, it's up to you. You've been at the club for a long time. You know, you can decide. You've got one year left in your contract, really. So decide and look at it and see what you want to do. So I finally made the decision that, I, you know, I will go to, to, to the Olympics to play for my country, for, to represent Nigeria. So I, I did that, came back, and that was it. He never looked at me. We never saw eye to eye. He sent me to train with the reserve team. <laughs> and oh, after wow. he did that for, for a couple of months, he thought, you know what? That punishment is not enough. No, 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 no. Now he's going to train alone. So I started training alone for like six months. Every day I was doing, I was just running and running and running for six months. Away from the Away squad. from everybody alone until I left. Um, yeah, so that was, yeah, that was my... Uh, that was Antonio Conte. Exactly. <laughs> so thank goodness for Gianfranco and Maurizio Sarri when, when you guys came into the club. And, and Gianfranco, I was a huge fan of Sarri, like you. What he did at Napoli, his background, he's got a background in banking, hasn't come through the traditional way. What was he like? Did, did he get enough credit, in your opinion, from Chelsea fans and maybe fans of English football? Well, I think uh, uh, they, they really like him at the beginning. <laughs> Then they had a few question marks, especially with uh, during the Christmas time where we had a big uh, uh, drop in our form. But then towards the end, we came uh, we came alive uh, again, and we won the the European Cup against Arsenal. I think that, uh, in my opinion, the the, the supporters didn't see the best of him. Because uh, uh, Maurizio is a type of coach that uh, is very intense uh, when he works tactically mm. and uh, is very disciplined and it requires a lot of attention. And the best, of the, the, the best of the team, the best of himself, the team gets the best out of him, not the first year, in my opinion, but the second year. Because he works a lot on repeat on, on repetition, and uh, repetition. and John knows. Yeah, yeah. it's like Conte John knows well, yeah. exactly it's like what. Conte, yeah, yeah. Exactly, he was every day, every day the, the, the same. same thing. Yeah. Boom, same. boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So the players, uh, you know, they got a certain a certain moment. They were a little bit uh, fatigued mentally as well. And uh, so I think uh, you know, 
when you get into the routine, then you get better. Everything becomes automatic and, and the performance improves a lot. So I think that uh, he, he, he hasn't given the best. But despite that, anyway, the, the, the year we were there, we came third in the league behind, uh, you know, City and, uh, and Liverpool. And we won the uh, European Cup against Arsenal, playing, uh, you know, beating them quite uh, well. And uh, yeah. I think it's been a positive thing. But in my opinion, and I told Sarri as well when he left, I said, uh, you are doing uh, a completely wrong thing. I think uh, the best for you is now, now on to come. And uh, but obviously he wanted to go back to Italy and didn't happen. But... Uh, it could have been much better. Two players I want your opinion on. John's given me his opinion on one of them. Eden Hazard. He was fantastic that year for you and Maurizio. I mean, John, you've said it in training. You know, not phenomenal. It was match day, it was phenomenal. <laughs> in training, he would just do what he wanted to do. But what a player, Gianfranco. What was your takeaway from Eden? Uh he was the he was the player that uh, used to run Maurizio crazy more than the others <laughs> because we used to come we used to come to training and uh, you know the routine was that one and uh, so when Maurizio was starting the training Eddie, Eddie was, uh, I, I need to stand up he would do like this he would, he would do like this come on uh, come on boys let's start training and he would do okay coach and he would do like that. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me. He would do like that. He would put his, his, uh, his head down and he would do like that. Yeah. Because he didn't like repetition. He wanted to be, you know, uh, I know players like him, they want to do different stuff. You want to do, they want to do funny stuff because yeah. they are they yeah. are so good and yeah. they can win the game. Or anyway, having said that, he was fantastic because... You know, he, he was complaining about the the, the, the the training session sometimes, the regime, but he was always so good for us. And uh, in the crucial moments, I remember that uh, there was a, there was a difficult, difficult time. When we went to play, we were playing away uh, to Cardiff and we were losing and he was on the bench because he was resting in. And the supporters were chanting, uh, you know, against us, against Sarri, they wanted Sarri out. And he came on the pitch along with uh, Love to Chick, Ruben. And he completely changed the game. He won the game for us. He was amazing. And so yeah. he's professionally, he's, he's, um, the way he played the year was, 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 was great. He, he, you know, he gave us, he saved us so many times in, uh, during the game with, with his ability that uh, I can only speak highly about him as a player and as a, as a boy. We're yeah, trying to get him yeah, on the podcast, yeah. but John keeps selling his secrets to the media. You got to shut up about you, then, John. <laughs> I keep trying, I keep trying, but I mean, it just shows. It just shows that you know everything we've said about him. You know, yeah. it's all, it's all. You know, it's not like we're saying something no. that that is not true. Even when I told you he picked up the phone, he called me after the, my first <laughs> episode. Is like. He called me and then I picked up the phone. He's like, you, you, uh, <laughs> stop talking shit about me. <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> and then we're not all talking shit, but we're all saying how good, good. Yeah. you are. You, you, you didn't put in so much effort and you are this good. Imagine if you yeah. did put a little bit of more effort, yeah. how good you, you would have been. And, and he, he definitely agreed. He said, listen, I know I just enjoyed playing football. For me, football was just enjoyment. I looked at it. I, should I have put in a bit more effort? Of course, yes. But did I want it to? Maybe not. I just enjoyed being out there, and, and, and he enjoyed coming to training every day, having you know to 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 have a laugh with his friends, have a banter, have a good banter, uh, you know, just do silly things, and then go home. For him, that's what he thought. And then on a Saturday, he comes in and he, he performs magic. But for us, you know, that doesn't have that same level of talent that he has we want to train we because for us we need to train to be as you know close to his level but it just shows uh how Incredible. good the guy was yeah Incredible. but that's 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 where forgive me if i stop you uh, that's where i think uh you know as a big player like he is you have to understand you know there are players like himself they are so gifted that uh, yeah. they need to do even less but if every 
all the team would do the same thing that he does, it, it doesn't work, you know? Yeah. And and that's what we we were trying to, you know, we, we spoke many times about that. And, uh, and uh, going back to what you said, I mean, if he had trained more, would have been better? Who knows? Maybe, exactly. you know, he needed to be like that to, in order to be true, so, true. so effective, true. you know? True. It was... Uh, I've, I've said this to before, Jean Franco. I've said this to John. So I, I know Graham Potter quite well, and you know Graham's time at Chelsea did not end well. Seven months in the job, and one of his biggest regrets, he said, was Ngulo Kante was injured for basically the entire time that he was Chelsea manager. He had eight training sessions with him, but I think it was eight before he was sacked. After the defeat to Aston Villa, the ownership decided they want to take the club in a different direction and Frank came in as interim boss. And he came away from that thinking, wow, if I had N'Golo Kante, I would have won three or four more matches. I would have stayed in a job and who knows, I would have got a pre-season. How good was N'Golo Kante? Because from what I see, there is no midfielder, even to this day, in modern football yeah. that quite gets yeah. near to what he brings to a football club. Talk to me about him, if you can. <laughs> of course, I can speak the whole day about him. Uh, <laughs> it, I mean, it was a joke. It was a joke because it was impossible to see anybody running so much at high, high speed, high, high intensity speed. High intensity, yeah. You know, the high intensity yeah. runs that he used to make, he was the double of everyone in the yeah. in the Premier League. So what? you know, you know that uh, yeah. you you cannot run uh, you cannot. high speed for such a long time because otherwise you 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 know you cannot do you you yeah. we have uh, just enough energy. This guy was the double of everyone. And uh, and it was unbelievable. Uh, sometimes we used to laugh on the on the on, <laughs> on the bench because we couldn't believe it. He, yeah. he was he was defending and getting the ball. All of a sudden, he was attacking on the other hand. <laughs> and then you think he's gonna stop there, and he's still no. And then back. he come back. And you think he's coming back? I'm like, how? And you think you know when you do when you do such sprints. You you sometimes see players we stop obviously to like yeah. no he doesn't stop he keeps you know you know the the, the, the way he runs and you see yeah. him trotting back and sprinting back you thinking what is this guy on surely he must be on something so true. and as soon as this guy came to the club also I knew my time was was done <laughs> <laughs> I packed my shit and I said thank you very much I'm gone <laughs> no it was uh, it was it was incredible and uh, and a great guy yeah also. Yeah, you know, never, never saw him complaining. Never, never saw him, you know, doing anything uh, wrong. Uh, he was a. Uh... That's why I said it was a joke. <laughs> uh, the other thing as well, I don't think he gets enough credit for in possession of possession, the football. Yeah. He's very, very good as very well. Very good, uh. very good. Very tidy with the ball as well. Uh, can play, can play the ball. Doesn't lose the ball quite often. Um, and, 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 and that's something that he didn't get as much credit as he would have, uh, that he deserved. Uh, not just for the running. Because sometimes people didn't see what he did with the ball. He yeah. was very, very good with the ball. I remember the goal he scored, uh, was it Manchester United at Stamford Bridge, where he chopped, uh, I don't know who, who, you know, there was a pass that came to him. You know, I say like a, like a striker, control the ball yeah. and turn and just finish with the, I mean, just things like that, that he did with the ball that we didn't give him much credit. Of course, we gave him credit for, you know, yeah. His crazy runs, but I think he deserved more credit with the ball. What a player he yeah. was, no doubt about that. Last few minutes with you, Gianfranco. I know you've given us a lot of time already on this edition of the podcast. We cannot thank you enough for yes. that, by the way. Uh, you know, we talk in Gulo Kante. Claudio Ranieri is a man you played for not once but twice. Napoli and then Chelsea. Of course, Kante was a key man in Claudio's Leicester City side. In all of your, your years in football, Gianfranco, and knowing Claudio as you do, is Leicester City's Premier League victory still one of the greatest stories ever written in football? Yes, without doubt. Uh, we all know that uh, nowadays, obviously, the finance, the finance uh, that you have, the, the can, can detect a lot. Uh, when you have, you have uh, team, teams that they can spend so much money, get the best players, get the best coaches. You have advantages that sometimes are 
advantage that you cannot uh, feel. You cannot compete yeah. with them because they are too strong. Yeah. They get the best players, the best managers. So you can't you can't really compete nowadays. Before you could do that because we we have so many stories of teams that they win they win the league uh, even if they are small teams. I can tell yeah. you Verona, uh, Cagliari many years ago and uh, and others. You know. But but nowadays uh, it's so difficult and uh, so what the, they achieved with Leicester was uh, was amazing. Uh, honestly, it was amazing. They had uh, some young, incredible players like Mares, like Vardy, Mares, yeah. like uh, like Kante, Kante yeah. Yeah. Uh, and many others, Drinkwater, and many others. Drinkwater, so they, yeah. they they were they were a very good team, you know. But what what they achieved was uh, was a. Uh, Honestly, it was something that is not going to be easy to see another another yeah. thing like that. And for Claudio, a man that you know well, Gianfranco, dilly ding, dilly dong. I'm still not sure what he was banging on about there. <laughs> dilly to be ding, honest. dilly dong. Dilly ding, dilly dong. I mean, you know him. What is he like? Uh, you know, is he ex eccentric as he comes across at times? No, he's a good coach. I mean, I had him in two. In two periods of my life, uh, when I was starting in Napoli, and he was a different coach. Uh, and then when uh, when I had him as a as a Chelsea manager, he was a different coach. Was a little bit more pra pragmatic as a coach. But um, no, he's good. I had uh, I had a good relationship, and uh, and uh, you know I have to say even with Chelsea, did very well because he came in a. In a tough moment, there, it was a transition time. A lot of uh, very strong and important players that were, you know, getting old, and he needed to make some changes. And so some of the, you know, changes that they had to do, they were difficult, very unpopular. But uh, in my opinion, he dealt well with with all of them. He showed that he was a good coach, and uh, and he did very well for 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 Chelsea as well. Yeah, the Tinker Man, as he was known. Yeah. Now, we can't do a podcast with you without talking about a man that we talked uh, about uh, to Roberto on the last edition. A very good friend of yours, no longer with us, Gianluca Vialli. Roberto told us a wonderful story yeah. about Luca's OCD and that you and Roberto loved moving his, <laughs> his magazines and his books on his coffee table. I mean, your memories of Gianluca, your own personal memories of him. No, great memories. Uh, you know, when I first came, he, we used to go, especially at the beginning, we used to go out for dinner a lot because he was talking to me about the club, about the supporters, about the, the the Premier League. So he helped me a lot on that. Also gave me a lot of advices how to leave London and uh, many stuff. I remember we used many times he used to come to my house and... Uh, have dinner with my family, so we had the great times uh, together. It, it's it's a big loss. It's too early when he left us, and uh, and uh, sometimes I still uh, don't believe that he is not here anymore. Mm. Uh, but he's, he, all I can say about Luca, he wasn't a normal person. He was one of those people that uh, you can see they have uh, something. You know something more than the others, the many others. Um, a lot of knowledge, a lot of personality, a lot of charisma, and uh, you know, it's been a big fortune for for me to have met him and to have had uh, as a teammate and as a coach with Chelsea. So um, great, great, uh, great character. Well said, Gianfranco, well said. And I guess to finish, we've got to talk about your beloved Chelsea today. John, you and I have talked about it. You're very much pro Mauricio Pochettino. You feel that the club, slowly but surely, on the pitches, is getting back somewhere to... Not the last game. <laughs> Not the last game. <laughs> Not the last game at Not all. Not the last game. No, I think, obviously... No, I think, looking back at the, the two games before the last game, I think the game against Spurs and the yes. game against City is... As well, I think we should still take the positive that we saw from those games, and to see and to and and to keep to 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 keep that positive and to 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 know that we are going on the right track. I think that I, I think you could see that there's a little bit of a, 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 
you know, uh, step up in terms of performance. Uh, I think uh, with those two games, especially the City game, I can take out a lot of positive yeah. from that game. But now, I think, was it because we were playing against City? When we do play against a lesser team that will come to the bridge and will defend and will sit back we'll and struggle. try to counterattack, that's when we struggle. Yeah. But bigger games, because they come at us, we go at them, it becomes like a, you know, a basketball game. Yeah. It favors us, kind of. So I, I, I want to see us when we play against those lesser teams. How do we break them down? How do we break those defenses down? And make sure John, we concede as well on the counter yeah. as well. John, you know that uh, the when you play against a, a strong team, is a completely different uh, game than when you play against a small team. Yes. Against a, a, a big team, you know that you have a team that is going to also attack you. And sometimes if you... You prepare the game and you stay back and uh, you 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 close down and then you 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 use the space behind the behind them. You can be very very successful yeah. and very yeah. very yeah. very dangerous. And Chelsea has got these qualities yeah. because they have fast players, they have youth, yeah. they have energy. But when you play against teams that they have uh, they have uh, they are uh, you know smaller teams and then defend and they close down all the space. There you need to have uh, something different. And exactly. you have to create that. You need to have Eden Hazard. They, they can exactly. break uh, defense down. The difference, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I think that's where Chelsea will need to focus because, you know, they need to get better on this. Um, uh, because many teams are smaller than Chelsea and they will defend against them. And they need yeah, to exactly. know how to break them down. If they do that, then, you know, they, they can become an important team again. But as yeah, a Chelsea yeah. fan, Jean Franco, you you like you like Poch and, and you think he is the right man for the now, the here and now. I think he's the he's the perfect manager for us because he's he's worked already before in situations like that. He worked with the teams that they were young, with a lot of potential, and he, and he made them very good teams. So I think uh, uh, he is the right man. They need to. We need to understand that uh, a team is not formed in, in one week, uh, uh, two weeks or a month. It takes time. And we had a lot of players that they came in, a lot of new players. Every window, mm -hmm. there, there are always players <laughs> that they come in. Yeah. The point is that when a lot of players, they come in, they need to fit into the system. They need to gel with each other. The, yeah. It's a process time, that takes yeah. time. It takes yeah. time. But, but I, we cannot doubt... Uh, the abilities of uh, Maurizio is very, very good coach. Yeah, I think also now that the game has become about much more about about result. Yeah, here now, I think I, I'm quite scared. I don't know the own this owners, but I think uh, also Roman also was a bit ruthless as well when it comes to that. You know, that's why we we kind of won a lot of trophies like we did. But it, it was different with our time because. No matter what the changes that happen on the pitch, the spine of the team was yeah. always there. We always had the spine of the team. You had the know-how, no? Exactly. <laughs> so whoever was coming was had to buy into what we have because we already have it. But yeah. this team is such a young team. The experience is not there. So my fear is that will he have that much time? Will will these new owners give him that much time to be able to 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 achieve what he will achieve with this with this young team, because I I think he will achieve what he wants to achieve, but will he, he get to, the time? Yeah, do you think yeah. he will, John Franco? Uh, no, I think uh, it's it's. Uh, they, they asked me a few times at the beginning of the season what I thought, and uh, I I I remarked that uh, for me was what was important was to keep the expectations down, because if you you know if the, you have a new a new team a young team with a lot of uh, uh, players that they came in young, they need experience. They need to, and if the expectations of the everyone are the same, that uh, because of, of what has been Chelsea in the last ten years, then yes, you know you struggle because exactly. uh, you know yeah. they they will be looking to win the league straight away, and uh, that won't happen unfortunately. Uh, so I, I think. Uh, if the supporters they are uh, as good as they are normally and they are patient behind this team, then everything will come together. I'm hearing good things about Christopher in Kunku. I know he's back in training, spent big money from RB Leipzig. I'm hearing good things about him. He could make a difference in the final third just to unlock those defences, that low block, those teams that come and sit in. Are you a fan of Christopher in Kunku, Gianfranco? 
Well, I saw him. Uh, I haven't seen him playing live. I saw him on the on TV, and I and I like his his ability, his quality that he's got. Uh, certainly, he can help the team, and I think the whole team has to step up a little bit. Uh, as I was saying, in the, especially in those uh, tight games, uh, they need to to find uh, more resources. They need to find the ways to, you know, break uh, those defenses down. Because once they don't. They learn to do that, then it will be, you know, also the the the, the trust in themselves, and uh, it, will, it will be better, and it will improve so many things. Well, what they need is they need a Gianfranco Casola. That's what they do. Twenty six <laughs> years ago. That's what, they, what need. they need. Do you miss it, Gianfranco? <laughs> do you miss it? Do you miss <laughs> pulling on the boots and doing what you did for twenty years? Well, of course. I mean, it's uh, you know when you and uh, John can tell you when you yeah. when you when you stop playing, it's like a part of yourself is dying. Yeah, you know? yeah. And uh, but it's okay. I missed it, but I'm maybe on my time. I'm maybe with the experience with everything football has given to me. So no regrets. No regrets. And I guess the final one, your, your message to not just Chelsea fans, but to Napoli fans, to Parma fans, to, to the fans that chanted your name. I mean, when you bump into them in the street, whether that's in London, whether it's, you know, over in Naples, you know, what do you say to the fans that, that still adore you to this day? No, the, the, the thing that I can tell them from, from my eyes, thank you. Thank you because... Uh, I was a player that needed the, their support, no? I, I, I love the enthusiasm of the gent. I, I wanted the people to say, wow. And uh, their, uh, you know, their, their closeness, they, you know, gave me the, the, the energy to train hard every day to, to, you know, be better and make them smile and enjoy what I was doing. So thank you very much for all the support that they gave me. What a legend he is. What well, a legend yeah, you yeah. are, Well, we'll have to say thank you so much to you. It's been an absolutely a pleasure. It, it certainly yeah. has. And yeah. I'm told a little birdie tells me that you're off to Mauritius soon to play a charity <laughs> golf tournament. Is that right? <laughs> it is right, actually. Yes, we are, we are going there to play, obviously, golf, have fun, but also to raise money for charity. And my charity is a very important one, is the... the, the uh, hospital in uh, in uh, San Raffaele hospital in uh, Milan for the sclerosis uh, multiple multiple sclerosis research so I'm wow. Quite looking forward. I hope I can get more money than last year this year. Well, listen, I, I'm told, and I, I've played a bit with Robbie Fowler. He's going to be over there. I'll tell you now, Gianfranco, his golf game is very good. It's looking good. So you're in for a real battle in a couple of weeks. We Yes, no problem. I'm going to have a little bit of chit-chat with him and I'm going to put him a little bit off. I know he, he doesn't <laughs> like my, my talking, so I'm ready for him. Well, top man, Gianfranco. It's been great to have you on the podcast. That smile of Thank yours you. continues to be... That smile of yours pisses Sir Alex Ferguson off. We love it on the podcast. Thank you so much. No, thank you. I really enjoyed it. It's been fantastic talking to you. And, grazie, uh, grazie, and grazie. I'm, I'm going to be following you more and more, eh? Thank you so Top much. Man. John <laughs> Franco Zola. Thank you. Arguably Chelsea's <laughs> you. greatest ever on the podcast. Thank you so much, John Franco. Thank you so much. Grazie Thank mille. You. What a legend. What a legend that man is. He's right up there. He's top of the tree. Oh, he is good, isn't he? Yeah, he yeah. was ace. Yeah, he was ace. You were worried. You perfected your <laughs> Italian thinking that that man's English wasn't that good. His English is better than you and mine put together. How much more Italian? Give us more, John. What no, else? I don't have any more. <laughs> Grazie mille. Perfecto and ciao. Grazie mille. Ciao. <laughs> Tutto bene. <laughs> Tutto bene. Uh, that was Gianfranco Zola on the OB1 podcast, <laughs> made possible by Bet Winner. That's six episodes in the can now, John. Yep, that's it. I mean, how the heck? How the we... hell? Exactly. I'm just going to say that. I mean, we just thought it was like yesterday. And um, yeah, I mean, we've, we've, we've got we've six done ex episodes already. Captain, leader, legend. Yep. We've done. Maybe, and he's gone now, I can the greatest, say this. Second the greatest. greatest football. Uh, yeah. So France, yeah. the greatest. Mm -hmm. We've had one of the hottest strikers in world football right yeah. now. We've had the man who knocked you out in training, Florent Maluda. <laughs> We've had... So he said. <laughs> the, he definitely knocked you out. We've had Roberto Di Matteo, the one that won the European Cup for Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. And then we've had the man that was voted by Chelsea fans as their greatest. greatest Chelsea. 
football player ever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, listen, I think I agree with that vote. Um, you, you know, that? listen, I've played against great, great football players at Chelsea. Uh, again, of course. Frank, Frank has to be up there. Um, and then that little man. Didier Drogba has to be up there. JT as well, captain leader, legend, has to be up there. So, and of him. course, and him. Um, so I, and then you. I put them all in that category, and then we all, <laughs> everybody else follows. Yes. No <laughs> so uh, there's no shame in saying that. I mean, those guys were fantastic oh. football players. Um, uh, so I've always said, uh, so pleased and so fortunate to, to, to have played with the likes of, you know, Frank, JT, Didier Drogba, Peter Cech, Hopefully, will be our next On guest. On the podcast, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's um, no, no, no. I think uh, what what what, what uh, Franco gave to the fans uh, and the reaction, oh. and just what I said, the reaction that if you see him at the bridge, the reaction from the fans is absolutely amazing. Adoration. Yeah, exactly. I've only seen that with the likes of John Terry, Frank Lampard, but his one is just an astro. Just takes it up a notch. The fans were going absolutely crazy. The kids as well yeah. were going crazy. They never got to watch him. They're well but they were Exactly. They were going absolutely crazy about him. And it just shows. And when he came on the pitch, he did a chip where, I don't know, I think he's, he's been known about the, the, the little chip, chip dink that he does. Uh, he did that for one of the goals and everybody went absolutely bananas. Bananas, yes. Well, listen, six episodes done. The only way we top this, I hope that contact book of yours, Roman Abramovich, <laughs> Eden Hazard, Dini Running Drogba, Jose <laughs> Mourinho. We've got Rio Ferdinand and Petr Cech as well. We're, we're working we're behind working, the yeah. scenes. We're working on some yeah, big we're guests. Working, yeah, yeah. Upcoming. Yeah. It's yeah. been great. Six down. Loads more still to come. You're still enjoying it? I still enjoy it. Still still up for it. I mean, like, it's... Um, and you're understanding my Scottish more and more. I am. <laughs> I'm going to have you talking Scottish. And of course, of we always have to say thanks to our, you know, sponsors. Ab absolutely. Uh, you know, Bet Bet winners. They've, uh, they've been absolutely fantastic. Uh, fantastic with us, supporting us. Uh, and a reminder, you yeah. do get a promo code Mikel12 uh, on betwinner.com. All the information uh, on there. But that is it for That's another it. edition, That's John. It. It. it is local time. Back next. 12.30 a.m. We are local time recording this podcast. It has to be up in the next five, four hours. Four hours, Take exactly. I've got the kids. <laughs> you've got the kids. So we'll wrap her up. But for now, thank you very much, John. Yes, mate. We're back uh, next week with another installment. The John Obi podcast. The Obi One podcast made possible by Betwinner. Ta-ra for now. Winning has always been my driving force. Growing up, I dreamt of playing for the Nigerian national team. My passion led me there. The support and unity of players and Nigerian fans led us to the final. Together, we won the African Cup of Nations. A moment that will forever be carved in my heart. Join the winning team with Betwinner.